Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Tuesday, August 16th, 2016. Here's a quick look what's coming up. Tonight, public enemy number one, George Soros and the secret plot behind the engineered global migrant crisis. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton wants to bring in Syrian refugees in numbers far greater than Obama. Then, Alex Jones reveals the globalist plan for America. So if I disliked people in the inner city, I'd be like George Soros, inducing them with change agents on the ground, foundation funded, to burn this baby to the ground. And Milwaukee Sheriff David Clark says the rioters need to stop focusing on the police and start figuring out a way to fix the ghetto. Stop trying to fix the police, fix the ghetto. I talked about those urban pathologists. All that plus InfoWars boots on the ground at the next Trump rally. That's up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. America is in a crisis situation right now. And during the months and years ahead, we're all going to see things we never thought possible in our country. And unfortunately, the majority of the population is totally unprepared for what is about to happen. Now, I'm talking about the attempted globalist takeover of our country. This is a plan to divide and conquer America. And so far, it is working. Right now, the global banking cartels and the UN are using a wave of Islamic migrants to completely destroy the sovereignty of Western nations. We've all seen what's been going on in Europe with the migrant crisis, engineered, by the way, by the globalist. And guess what? We're next. Because George Soros, public enemy number one, and perhaps the best known New World Order globalist, says Europe's refugee crisis should be accepted as the new normal. And that means new opportunities for Soros organizations and the UN to influence immigration policies on a global scale. Meanwhile, it's no secret that Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton both want to dramatically increase illegal immigration into America. In fact, Hillary wants to allow Syrian refugees in numbers far greater than Obama ever dreamed of. I mean, we're talking on the same level or on the same scale as Europe or worse. And it's no secret that George Soros is one of Hillary's biggest campaign donors. This guy is dumping millions and millions of dollars into Hillary's campaign. And if their plan goes into effect and succeeds, you will no longer recognize this country. America as you know it, over, gone. In fact, the most likely outcome of a migrant crisis, of race riots and open borders is civil war because the globalists want to burn this baby to the ground. Well, the police chief has come out and pointed out that the problem the last three nights in Milwaukee after a black police officer shot a black armed man with a felony record was stirred up by the Communist Party that had been brought in from Chicago. And that is what we experience basically every single time. Now, I wanna be clear here. This is not about a referendum on the police. It's not about saying the police are perfect or there aren't bad cops or legislatures aren't passing bad laws that are unconstitutional and putting police officers in an unconstitutional role. I have big issues with it and always have, but I'm not mentally ill. If a bad cop does something somewhere else and then someone randomly shoots another cop, that's called craziness. And we have globalists trying to destabilize this country and other countries, and we have their own emails and their own battle plans. But I don't need a Soros hack. The UN admits they're doing this. The UN, the State Department admits they spent $5 billion starting six years ago to overthrow Ukraine, overthrow an elected government. And they started it talking about police brutality and using cases in the media that Soros and others were funding to make the police emblematic of the evil government. And the government was doing some bad stuff. And the police had done some bad things. But the point is foreign outside interest 
came in and stirred it all up to get a shooting war going. Now, shooting wars are bad for business, bad for kids going to school, bad for stock markets. See, we got a big, wealthy country. It's got problems. But we sure don't need to burn it all down, do we, to fix the problem? No. And by the way, if poor people get induced by an evil mastermind to burn down their own neighborhoods, that doesn't help them, does it? I'm going to end up being just fine because I'm a wise person. I know how things work. I've made preparations. So if I disliked people in the inner city, I'd be like George Soros, inducing them with change agents on the ground, foundation funded, to burn this baby to the ground. It's such a sick joke. So there you go. George Soros is not only funding the migration crisis in Europe, but he's also the money man who's responsible for the destabilization program here in America. Mm -hmm. And with us now is Margaret Howell, InfoWars reporter, and she's going to shed some light on the Soros plan to influence global immigration now. We're talking global immigration, not just Europe, but also here in the United States. And you have some leaked memos you want to talk about. I sure do, Darren. So this crisis, this immigration crisis, he wants to capitalize on it, make it the new norm, if you will. And there, it's about stemming the reaction to the crisis. They want it so normal that we don't even react, we don't blink an eye, so that th this agenda can be furthered. It also goes much deeper than I thought. Media manip manipulation, cash for social justice causes. So anybody that's willing to attack somebody who says the word radical Islam, for example, calling them Islamophobic, He's pouring money into these groups um, and counteracting uh, people like uh, Pamela Geller, for example, um, David Horowitz. There, there's a list of people, um, the Middle East Forum, the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. He's, he's attacking certain groups that dare say radical Islam is radical Islam and question the immigration policies that we have. Okay, and these are also talking points that he wants his organizations and people that he's funding to use talking points, bullet points and basically the mainstream media to follow along right. these lines as well. Right, exactly. Right. So we know that he's a big contributor to Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. We know that uh, groups like Southern Poverty Law is a big recipient of Soros and his money. So yeah. looking at what they're doing and how they're trying to frame the narrative so that we go along with it, it becomes our new norm, and our borders, they collapse, and then mass immigration will follow. We know that Hillary Clinton, she said on Face the Nation that we're not doing our part, that we have to assume more responsibility for Syrian refugees. There's one report that says that she would take upwards of 400,000 if she's No, I mean, this is going to be nowhere near <laughs> what Obama let in. I mean, the next phase is to really, this will be a tsunami of, of Syrian refugees, mm -hmm. and they want open borders. You know, it's funny, you, you, you're talking about George Soros, you named the Southern Poverty Law Center, mm -hmm. but think about the groups that he funds. Communist revolutionary groups here in the United States, La Raza, mm -hmm. okay, uh, We've got Southern them. Poverty Law Center. 500,000 this year alone. You're absolutely right. That's yeah. one of the, the he's on the hit list uh, of this exposed organization. Yeah. I, think, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but that makes no, me No, it's so fine. And like I said, the, the list, the list goes on and on. But these are all anti American type of groups. Mm -hmm. And it's not like he doesn't care about Muslims and, and, and Muslim Brotherhood, and, and he doesn't care about La Raza. He does, what he cares about is destabilization, mm -hmm. right? He wants to destabilize this country. That's what this is all about. Mm -hmm. Any pundit that uses the word, any political pundit, Liz Cheney's even on this list. That surprised me that they're keeping track of their activities mm -hmm. because they're the most prominent drivers of Islamophobia. So... <laughs> Trump's speech today, uh, he, you know, it was really brilliant, Darren. I just want to touch on it because he he says that the combating the ideology is 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 what he's trying to do now, and he said that exposing radical Islam for what it is was a central part of his message. Just like in World War II, communism uh, was exposed, and, and and that that seems to be he seems to be at the forefront at countering this. I can only imagine Soros's hit list. Well, the, it's <laughs> yeah. definitely going to include Donald Trump. So right. absolutely. But, you know, we all know from intelligence reports, intelligence agencies across the board, including Donald Trump, they all agree mm -hmm. that the Syrian refugee crisis will be a Trojan horse. Mm -hmm. That's how they're going. They're going to infiltrate the Syrian refugees. That's how ISIS is going to come in here and attack America. And they're, they're even saying it could be like a Tet offensive style attack. We know also from intelligence reports, they're already here. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're active cells in this country. So it is just, it's just 
crazy to think that the, that the more they're just going to allow more and more refugees to come in. It's it's almost like they know there's a sinister plot. We want our um, our our govern our government to fall. I mean that seems like where we're headed in this because we need a global governance. We need a new world order. We need chaos to do that. So it's that a, okay, end. that's exactly it. It's mm -hmm. order out of chaos. They destabilize the region just like they've done other countries. And now the United States walks in or our global government walks in mm -hmm. to establish order out of chaos here in America. It's amazing. And the Trojan horse analogy, you know, that's that's probably the best analogy I've ever heard to, to sum up this crisis. So you have people and, and this leaked memo, the refugee crisis and the fear that the uh, interest of migrants fleeing poverty, climate change, generalized violence, and disaster. They want to push this as, as, you know, a humanitarian issue as a cause. And if you don't go along with it, you're Islamophobic, you're racist. But in reality, you know, we're talking about mass unvetted migrants. And it, we covered Kelly yesterday, you know, 9,000 in one specific camp. And they said, look, we know that ISIS and jihadis have infiltrated this camp. There's nothing we can do. It's about containment at this point. And that's where we are, Darren. Where we're, we're, we're France was five years ago, six years ago. We're right on the cusp of this. And that's why this election is so crucial. We need to look at who is funding her and somebody who wants this mass immigration, just like they saw in Western Europe. That's what the agenda is for us. That's yeah. it. And the more people learn about George Soros, the more they learn about Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. And it is imperative that we, we send that message. Look, I want to go over some headlines. This is just a small example of what's going on right now, but I'm going to go over some headlines. Donald Trump, Hillary's plan for more illegal immigration is a disaster for our country. Now, here's a headline from the Washington Examiner. Hillary drafts illegal dreamers to get immigrants to vote. Hillary Clinton's campaign on Sunday announced a program to recruit undocumented dreamers into a voter registration army, even though they are not allowed to vote. I mean, it's totally illegal and un unconstitutional. But we all know that Hillary is above the law. Hillary Clinton promises to give illegal immigrants more tax money, yet another incentive to illegally enter the U.S. Trump says Hillary wants to be America's Angela Merkel. A Hillary Clinton presidency would set America on course for a migrant crisis like the one destroying Germany. Again, this is a destabilization program by design. This is not... An accident, it is part of the global takeover. Shocker, UN admits migrant crisis plan to overthrow the West. This is the game plan to overthrow our civilization. Y'all need to wake up. This is the end game right here. America accepts six times more migrants than all other Latin American countries combined. And as you were saying, mm -hmm. they're just getting started. Right. Uh, we've talked about how rigged this system is and, you know, Hillary Clinton being admittedly saying that she's going after these 730,000 dreamers that can't legally vote. That tells me, Darren, that she's scared. She's going to need some people that can't even legally vote in this country if she can't rig the system. That's what that says to me. That that headline in The Washington Times yesterday, it was it was so astounding. It's like, mm -hmm. do people realize what this woman is doing? Well, I always said that as long as they, <clears throat> they convince the American public that it's neck and neck, mm -hmm. it's 50-50, then they're more likely to accept if she wins and steals the election. Right. But now they're even going a step further. Like I've heard the New York Times and other an analysis are saying the Hillary is winning by a landslide <laughs> right now. So it's totally, it's like George right. Orwell's 1984. <laughs> uh, I don't believe that for a minute. I mean, when's the last time you've seen a, you know, Hillary for, for uh, prison, you see lots of those bumper right. stickers, but never Hillary for president. You look at places like Scranton, Pennsylvania, where Hillary will go and then Trump will go, and you'll see a Trump rally, and she can barely pack the first floor. And then you look at the same stadium where Trump speaks a few days later, or sometimes, you know, the very next day, and it is so massively packed. You wonder, what what polls are they doing? Well, I mean, and, then, and now the mainstream media is even going as far as Photoshopping mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton rallies, and we've seen evidence of that. Right. And they're also saying that Trump rallies have low outcome because they're taking pictures of Trump rallies hours before everybody shows up. So they're really definitely trying to you manipulate know, the view. Manipulate. Manipul That's why they call it television programming. That's it. That's right. So it's very important that you all you know turn off your televisions every once in a while. Do your own research on the Internet. Find out all about George Soros. I mean, he's an open book. I mean, the, the mm -hmm. information is there. This guy is not only behind the Muslim immigration crisis, 
Uh, you know, Margaret was just talking about how he's behind the Southern Poverty Law Center. You need to look into those guys. He's uh, funding communist revolutionaries in America. He's funding La Raza, and he's funding Black Lives Matter. That's right. The BLM is funded by a rich old white guy. <laughs> and for those of you who support Black Lives Matter, you've been had, right? You got duped. And, you know, th that's the thing is, is a lot of people don't understand this. And if they just knew all of this together, again, I keep saying it again and again, it is to divide and conquer, and conquer. the nation. As long as, you know, united we stand, <laughs> divided we fall. <laughs> what does America look like if, God forbid, Hillary Clinton becomes president? Well, you know, going on the Black Lives Matter um, bandwagon here for a second, the media manipulation of what's happening on the ground there, even coming out of Milwaukee, we covered it today, where an outright lie was told, uh, video was manipulated so poorly that it changed the outcome of the story. And if we continue to see this, Darren, if we continue to see the country ripped apart by uh, this this race war that the only thing the mainstream media wants to cover, you know, it's, it's, it's done two things. It distracts us from what's actually happening in major issues. That's, that's the first thing. And the second thing it does is that it requires that we have a, a force greater than ourselves to come in and manage us because we're just so torn apart. Mm. And I really hate to see uh, the, the, manip the manipulation aspect of this. People need to wake up. The internet searching is key. You know, I've been doing that all afternoon, looking at things about George Soros. And I've got to tell you, it's out there if you look for it. Well, as you know, over the past weekend, Milwaukee police fatally shot an armed 23-year-old black man who police say had a lengthy arrest record. And although very little was known about the actual incident, well, that didn't stop rioters and looters from taking to the streets and setting the city ablaze. In response to the police shooting, angry protesters began causing disturbances at around 3.30 p.m. on Saturday in Milwaukee, initiating a revenge campaign, mob justice. They set a gas station on fire and then started shooting bullets into a heavily populated area. They also set a bank on fire in three other buildings. They assaulted journalists. They started attacking white people. Several videos show white drivers being stopped in the middle of the street and the protesters attempting to, to pull them out of their vehicles. Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker declared a state of emergency and the National Guard was brought in. So far, 11 police officers have been injured by the violence. An 18-year-old man was shot and seriously injured and officers had to use an armored vehicle to retrieve the man to take him to the hospital. And the protesters actually attacked the armored vehicle. We keep focusing on the police and I've said publicly before, stop trying to fix the police, fix the ghetto. And I talked about those urban pathologies that have to be uh, addressed to shrink the size of the underclass. We have the growth of an underclass here in Milwaukee. And you saw some of their behaviors on display last night. Infowars reporter Joe Biggs on the scene there at the next Trump rally. This is in West Bend, Wisconsin, just north of Milwaukee. Any signs of protesters or Soros agitators? What do you expect to see this evening? Well, so far, there's about a handful of anti-Trump protesters that are uh, spewing the same stuff. You know, Trump's a racist, a bigot, a sexist, a xenophobic, Islamophobic, yada, yada, yada. Uh, you know, we'll try to go over there and ask them why they don't like Trump. And I'm going to go, you can't use the words racist, sexist, xenophobic, transphobic. Give me actual reasons off policies why you don't like them. And I'll give you reasons, real reasons, why not to support Hillary Clinton. Well, if you take those words out, I mean, half of them are not even going to be able to form complete sentences. So that, that, that should be a difficult task. I want to ask you about another Soros-funded organization. We're starting to see these guys pop up, not just Black Lives Matter, but we're seeing this all across the nation at, you know, whenever a, you know, somebody is shot by police or especially at Trump rallies. And that is the communist revolutionaries Rob Dew had a report uh, earlier today that was up on uh, Alex Jones' channel on uh, YouTube, and they put posters everywhere. Are you seeing any of the communists there yet this evening? No, we haven't seen any of the uh, Revcom guys out of Chicago. They're the Revolutionary Communist Party. Uh, one of the guys that I dealt with actually at the RNC in Cleveland, Gregory Johnson, he is a habitual 
American flag burner, but he has not shown his face here. But they definitely usually go to the scene of the crime when emotions are high, when tensions are high. Uh, people are at that pivotal point where they don't know what to do with their emotions, and they kind of help them push, give them that extra motivation to do the wrong thing. And actually, instead of sitting back and thinking about how they should control their anger, how they should control their emotions and do something positive with it, they're the ones that give them that final push to just do the wrong thing and go out and riot and actually destroy neighborhoods. When we were in Ferguson, Revcom was there. They're the ones with the bullhorns inciting people, giving these young guys that were angry a voice, per se, to make them feel like they had a, a way to stand up and actually fight back against this corrupt system. We all know there's a corrupt system, but there's a right way and a wrong way to go back, go by fighting it. And burning down someone's town is not the right way to do that. Arson is not the right way. Assault is not the right way. Going after and attacking people's way of life and how they're going to be able to provide for their families and get gas to go to their jobs is not helping the situation whatsoever. So there's a lot of misguided anger, and those guys take advantage of that and really help these kids do the wrong thing. Well, and that's the whole story behind the Black Lives Matter movement to begin with, because believe me, you and I both know there is plenty of solid, good black leadership in every community across the country, but those guys don't have a voice when it comes to the mainstream media. The mainstream is not yeah. going to ask them questions. You're not going to see them on mainstream television. Every time one of these events happen, you're going to see the likes of Jesse Jackson or the Reverend Al Sharpton, who's the ambulance chaser. He's there every single time. And it, and it seems like the biggest problem I have with Black Lives Matter and the people who support Black Lives Matter is there's plenty of police corruption and police brutality out there, but they always seem to rally behind the wrong guy. They rally behind the thugs. They rally behind Sherelle Smith, you know, and, and this guy was a street thug, you know, and uh, it was, it was, if there was an Olympic game for uh, the, you know, the quickest draw, I guess he came in second place. He lost, you know, and I hate to be that crude, but that's exactly what happened. I really got no sympathy for a lot of these guys with arrest records, uh, you know, a mile long. So what is it? Why are they backing street thugs? Why don't they back legitimate victims of police brutality? Like I said, there's, there's plenty of uh, police brutality to go around, but they always back the wrong guys. Hey, do me a favor. I noticed some people around there with the uh, Hillary for prison t-shirts. Do you guys have time to maybe ask a few questions to some of the people that are out there before hey, we so go? What's your name? Adam. Adam. So, uh, Adam, why are you out here today? Oh, just, uh, check out Donald Trump. Uh, support him a bit and see what he has to say. I haven't had a chance to get out and see him speak personally yet. So we'll here, see what he has to say today. I've already been following a lot of it, following you guys, listening to you guys for about nine years now, loving you. So, uh, you know, appreciate everything you're doing and just glad to be here and see old Donald, the centipede in person. So what do you think about all these DNC leaks coming out? The fact that Hillary Clinton is being exposed for the criminal. We all know she is, but it's finally coming out in the mainstream media. They're being forced to talk about it. They're being forced to address uh, these corruptions, these leaked emails, the fact that they've been colluding with the mainstream media to make her look like she's this, you know, perfect candidate when in fact we know she's not. I mean, what do you think about her? Well, I mean, it's interesting. We just keep getting little trickled bits of uh, leaks of information from her emails that she didn't want to show us. So I think it's pretty obvious. It's inevitable. I think everybody both in the establishment and out of it knows she's a criminal and knows that it's only a matter of time before she's fall, she falls. And anybody that studies history can tell that these tyrants will fall eventually. Now, do you live around here locally, close I by? Do, I do, I do. Now, I do. so what happened in Milwaukee at Sherman Park? You know, there was an officer-involved shooting. Uh, a lot of facts weren't out yet. Just like always, it takes a while for facts to trickle out for us to find out what's going on. But we had a lot of young guys who jumped to conclusions uh, thought that it was automatically a white officer who killed a unarmed black man, which in fact the truth has come out that it wasn't that. And these violent riots took place. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, it, it's, it's crazy. You can tell how it's almost being used as a weapon purposefully when these events take place, how all of a sudden it gets spun and crazy out of control. And, and when you look at the facts, sure. Uh, you know, maybe, uh, you got a, a black officer shooting a, a, a black male with a gun, waving it around. I mean, uh, I don't know if that's right to riot, is it? Do you feel like George Soros has a hand in all this? George Soros, wow. Yeah, he, uh, he obviously is the uh, man behind the curtain. And I think that uh, 
it's slowly coming to light and being exposed what he really is, which is just <laughs> the quantum criminal. All right, Biggs. Hey, I hate I hate to cut you off, but there's proof once again that anybody wearing a Hillary for prison T-shirt is well informed. I want to remind our audience that the Trump rally begins in just a couple of hours. It's just north of Milwaukee. Once again, Infowars reporters have boots on the ground on the scene, and you can check our YouTube channel, the Alex Jones channel, on YouTube for updates, and be sure to check out Infowars.com for updates as well. Joe Biggs, you got the last word. Well, just keep an eye on what's going on. We're going to see more of what happened in Milwaukee across the country as George Soros begins to funnel money and colluding with Hillary Clinton. Things are going to get worse before they get better. But you know what? Just like I said earlier, the force awaken, awakens is happening now. And the light side is starting to, to rise up and we're starting to overshadow the dark side. So stay tuned for more reports as we expose the corruption going on with Hillary Clinton and show you the light here at the Donald Trump rallies. That's Joe right. Biggs here reporting at InfoWars.com. All right, thanks, Joe. That's right, InfoWars.com, the truth awakens. Well, I'm Margaret Hell reporting for InfoWars.com. We've sent a crew from InfoWars to Milwaukee to cover the protests. Joe Biggs and Rob Dew are on the ground now, bringing you the latest unedited, uncensored videos from the protest movement and the riots that are underway. I want to talk about a CNN interview that happened on Monday. This taking place with Sherelle Smith, the victim, sister, or the suspect, whichever you like. CNN, they edit out this Milwaukee shooting victim's sister, her interview. Not surprising, dis information outright lies from CNN, the Clinton News Network. We've got the story right here and we're cutting through the bolt. Now, is this a classic case of media omission or is it an outright lie? Uh, both the CNN website and the CNN newsroom aired only a tiny fraction of Sherelle Smith's interview, of which you can hear her say, uh, burn down the suburbs. Now, we have a clip of Sherelle Smith, the interview in its entirety. The story was broken by Newsbusters. Take a listen to what she actually said before we get into what CNN reported. Oh, everything. So is mama, you all fight for her love. Burning down ain't gonna help nothing. Now you could clearly hear Sherelle Smith call on that tape for violence to be extended in the suburbs just not her part of town. And I'm gonna read you just a tiny excerpt just in case you missed it. She said, we need our expletive. Uh, take that expletive to the suburbs, burn their expletive down. We need ours, we need our weaves. I mean, I don't wear one, but we need it. I'm paraphrasing, of course. That was her interview in the entire, in the entire clip. Now, CNN on their website in an article on Monday framed the issue quite differently. This was their frame, this was their take on it. They say, Mrs. Smith, the interview you just heard, condemned violence carried out in her brother's name, saying the community needs those businesses. Uh, or did they listen to the same clip? Now, I'm gonna take you to what the CNN reporter had to say about that interview. We have her clip that aired nationally in the CNN newsroom. Take a listen to what she had to say. Family and friends holding a vigil marked by prayers. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. With his sister calling for peace. Don't bring the violence here and the ignorance here. Milwaukee police say they made multiple arrests overnight. We're still waiting on those final numbers. It comes on top of the 17 arrests made Saturday night. You can hear CNN correspondent Anna Cabrera report the protesters, uh, that uh, her report portrayed the protesters as peaceful, holding a vigil marked by prayers, calling an end for violence. That is clearly not the same interview she was referencing. And I just want to also point out the cryon originally got Sherelle Smith's name wrong. They had pointed her out to be another sister of the deceased. Uh, so is omission biased? Is it an outright lie? I seem to think so. And what we do know about CNN, they've admitted uh, in the past weeks, Chris Cuomo himself saying he's done everything that they can to support Hillary Clinton. We know that Fox, MSNBC, and CNN have given millions to the Clinton Foundation, the Clinton campaign. And can you really trust the information that you're getting if you can't even get the entirety of an interview? So much for unbiased journalism, I guess. Well, 1,300 fugitives living in federally funded housing. Nobody seems to care except for Senator Chuck Grassley. Now, that number shocked me. These are living in federally funded housing through the HUD program. Many of them convicted rapists 
or murderers, uh, narcotics trafficking, felony theft, fraud charges, other things like that. They're living in this federally funded housing, according to a 2012 report. So th that's our latest number, and it's been obtained by the uh, the uh, Freedom of Information Act request, the Daily Caller News Foundation. They've obtained this information. I want to take you through what Senator uh, Chuck Grassley is trying to do, the judiciary chair. He thinks that it's time for a federal watchdog that withheld this report to cough up some answers. Now, there's a federal law on the books that says that uh, people that are felons uh, they're supposed to be immediately terminated. Um, any fugitive or felon found to be on probation or a parole violator, they're not allowed to live in uh, federally funded housing. But 1,300 of them are doing it. Uh, HUD knows about it. The inspector general knows about it. The only thing that the Senate Judiciary Chair can do is ask why he can't actually enforce the laws on the books. And uh, this is what that local housing authority had to say about the problem. Through the vetting process, we determined it was an appropriate referral to the department. So they're referring it back to the department. It didn't make it to the final report. It was never forwarded to the agency. Somebody has dropped the ball, of course. Nobody knows. What we do know, though, is that convicted rapists and murderers are being protected, living on your tax dollar. I'm Margaret Hal, reporting for Infowars.com. Yet another American community is descended on by violent ignorance masquerading as a civil rights protest after a black career criminal was taken out by a black police officer after dangerously brandishing a stolen firearm. So where are the leaders of the supposed righteous anger boiling over in Milwaukee? Typically. President Barack Obama fiddled on the golf course while Rome burned. Obama's deputy press secretary, Jen Friedman, provided a statement that read, The president is golfing at Farm Neck Golf Club, one of his favorite courses on Martha's Vineyard. Also today, the administration said the president had been updated on the situation in Milwaukee. Meanwhile, Obama protege and Soros-insulated leader of Black Lives Matter, DeRay McKesson, tweeted, I denounce the state violence that led to any protests in the first place. Is this statement a result of McKesson's shallow incomprehension in the face of total anarchy based on the real facts? Or is there another hand at play here, directing Obama's incompetence and McKesson's callowness? It should come as no surprise that Black Lives Matter leader DeRay McKesson lives in a home owned by philanthropists James and Robin Wood in Baltimore, Maryland. The American Mirror reports it's the same address he used when declaring his residency on his campaign committee registration form for his failed mayoral run in the city's Democratic primary earlier this year. The Woods have owned the home since 1996 and are wealthy donors to the Baltimore chapter of George Soros's Open Society Institute. Robin is so active that she was made a board member of the far-left nonprofit back in 2008, according to the OSI's website. Anarchy organizer McKesson essentially resides in a clear example of the supposed white suburbs that the deranged mob in Milwaukee is threatening to burn down. And while the pawns of George Soros do their part to subtly fan the flames of division amongst the brainwashed citizenry of the United States, led by a wave of the Chicago chapter of the Revolutionary Communist Party now being largely blamed for the escalation in Milwaukee, George Soros and Sons continue to build a Trojan horse of jihadist migration embedded refugees aimed squarely at nothing less than unleashing a total disintegration of Western civilization. The Daily Caller reports a leaked memo from left-wing financer George Soros's Open Society Foundations argues that Europe's refugee crisis should be accepted as a new normal and that the refugee crisis means new opportunities for Soros's organization to influence immigration policies on a global scale. A section of the review titled Our Work describes how America's least transparent think tank has worked with leaders in the field to shape migration policy making and influence regional and global processes affecting the way migration is governed 
and enforced. In a section titled, Our Ambitions, the authors explain, our premise for engaging in work related to governance was that, in addition to mitigating the negative effects of enforcement, we should also be supporting actors in the field proactively seeking to change the policies, rules, and regulations that govern migration. Anarchy at our doorstep fueled by foreign interests lingering hubris in the White House, and a treasonous power-hungry menace is one step away from being the next commander-in-chief. Time to wake up, America, before you wake up homeless on the continent your fathers conquered. You still don't get it, do you, boys? There ain't no countries anymore. No more good guys. They're running the whole show. They own everything, the whole damn planet. They can do whatever they want. What's wrong with having it good for a change? Now they're going to let us have a good if we just help them. They're going to leave us alone. Let us make some money. You can have a little taste of that good life, too. John Bell for Everywhere.com. Jakari Jackson reporting from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Behind us, you can see the remnants of the gas station that was burned down following some nights of civil unrest. And that was following the shooting of a man by police. It sparked a lot of controversy. And to talk about that, we have a local citizen. Sir, what's your name? My name is Tony Hibbler. Okay, so... What's your views about what's going on out here in Milwaukee? My views about what's going on in Milwaukee is there's a lot of stuff that's been going on for a long time. Young people are fed up. Older people are fed up. We're all fed up. My thing is we all live in Milwaukee. There's ways to do everything so that the people in Milwaukee are not suffering because of the aftermath. If our people don't understand that rioting and tearing up stuff, burning up stuff, that all happened. We've done that before, but if you don't know your history, then you, you, you're there to have to suffer through it all over again. There are people who are trying to work a job and do everything to take. My thing is if we're going to sacrifice and we're going to make, make sure that this thing gets done, then we all need to sacrifice. It can't be we're going to do it today and then tomorrow we're going to go back to work and act like none of it ever happened. And on the weekend, we're going to come back out here. We're not looking for weekend warriors. We need to sit down, we need to meet, and we need to organize, and we need to know what it is that we need to do as Milwaukee. Not a section. All of us have to move so that we can get this thing done for the, the interests of the young people. Me and these young people you see, we're out here all the time trying to do positive, and we think outside the box on how to get these young people to do something that's going to be beneficial. We ask for a building, we ask for everything, but in the end, if we're not going to get it, we're going to do what we need to do. If it's come out here and ask the people to put money in the bucket to do things we need to do, to go out of town, to take the kids somewhere, to see some positivity, somewhere where something's going on, because it's not just Milwaukee. It, 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 it's everywhere you look. And we could talk about the police uh, uh, killing and, and saying that it's wrong or this or another, but we have to first look inwardly and do something with our young people so that they're out here being obedient to us and doing the things that they need to, then we as adults need to stand up in any fighting that needs to be done. We should be on the front lines. It shouldn't have to be our kids first and then we root them on. We as men should be standing on the front lines and then our children follow after us, but do it in a righteous manner so that whatever it is, it has to be done. The Bible says that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, then shall I hear from heaven and heal the land. That's a lot of instructions. But if you don't follow instructions, then we're out here in the middle of chaos. And who's to say that we won't be doing this again if another officer shoots somebody? There were a whole lot of people that got shot before that. And we have to do what we need to do so that we first stop doing what we're doing to one another. We stop the injustice that we're doing to one another. Then we hold people accountable for what they're doing. But if we're doing it to ourselves first, we have to first take the thorn out our own backside. Thanks so much, sir. It's great. You. More reports on InfoWars.com. Hey, go ahead and plug, uh, plug your group. And what do you guys do? This is the Nephi Nefertori Mentoring Program. We're a mentoring program about fine arts and community service because we believe in Use your talents, use your gifts, because the Bible says your gifts will make room for you. So if you're doing the things that God has talented you with and given you, just like the birds of the field don't have to worry about where they're going to live, what they're going to eat, how they're going to be clothed, then we won't have to either. But we have to use those things and believe in them enough. And then we have to go back out into our communities. If things are messed up and not cleaned up, it does not matter if you weren't the one who messed it up. But if somebody comes into your house and your house is a mess, you you are going to be looked at as a family, as a messy family. So you have to clean up and do whatever you need to to have a good name. Nephi Neff is an organization my mom and I started in order to give the kids something to do so there's no excuse about not having anything to do. 
but to also say when we give them something to do, it's going to be something that's structured. It's going to be something that's positive. And even if the people say this is a whole lot of noise, I, especially with what just happened, I know that people would much rather have some noisy noise where you can look at kids and say they're not out here tearing this up or doing this, that, another, versus having somebody who's quietly robbing you or taking your car away from you. All right, watch your kick off into a jam. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Here they go. Another, another great uh, thing going on here in Milwaukee. More reports on InfoWars.com. All right, Rob Deere reporting for InfoWars.com. We're on the corner of Burley and Sherman in uh, northern w Milwaukee in Wisconsin. And uh, what looks like the ATF is now conducting a teardown of the gas station here on the corner. Uh, just across the street over there is the park where there have been numerous demonstrations over the last few days. Well, this is just an example of, uh, I guess, your tax dollars at work. Whenever uh, you have groups of people that decide they have to burn buildings down, large federal agencies then have to come and do investigations. And uh, this is all coming out of your pocket, people. You know, if you're a welfare recipient, this is coming out of your welfare money. If uh, you're a taxpayer, you're paying for this. It all comes around and uh, all comes out. So you can see the giant ATF vehicle here with being guarded by uh, ATF, I guess, uh, officers, and you got several uh, vans, you got the ATF investigators over here. They've torn down most of the building at this point. And um, you can see they're just doing a, uh, I guess, a, a, I don't know if they're doing research into seeing what caused it or, or how it's being affected, but very interesting how just these small events that start off as a, you know, an officer involved shooting turn into large scale, you know, uh, you're going to have this disaster relief. And uh, you can see across the street, there's a band performing. They're trying to raise money. It's going. And uh, for their, I guess, to bring awareness to what's going on there, you got large uh, construction vehicles here. So what you're seeing is, you know, a mass expenditure of tax dollars whenever this stuff happens. So it's not affecting the community on many ways. We talked to a lady here last night who said this was the main area where people used to go buy the things they needed for their, uh, you know, for their kids, pampers or milk or something like that. That's what she mentioned. And uh, she had a family member, a cousin who was shot just a couple days ago. But you can see how this affects everybody at the end of the day. It's not just one little community that gets affected. We're all getting affected by this. And, uh, you know, so you got a lot of people out here, I guess, bringing notice to what's going on in this community, but here's the BP gas station. There were several other businesses burned, a, a hair salon, I believe a bank, and uh, and another type of, another store. But uh, here's a, a daytime look at the damage. We were here last night and you could see, you know, there's water still coming out of the water mains, still leaking somewhere, and uh, or it's draining out. 
But uh, massive damage done to this place. And <clears throat> this isn't going to help the community heal any faster. So uh, we'll be talking to more people throughout the day. This is Rob Dew with InfoWars.com. All right, that's going to do it for our broadcast this evening. Be sure to tune in tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Until then, have a blessed night. We'll see you back here tomorrow. This is a protest, and this is a riot. If you can't tell the difference, then you are part of the problem. Infowars.com.